gospel this Sunday is called the Last Supper Discourse because the beautiful teaching that Jesus has given was given to his disciples during the Last Supper in the upper room. We always heard the term upper room. What is this upper room? Upper room is actually the second level or second story of the building on Mount Zion. And it is traditionally believed to be the venue of the Last Supper. And remember, the Last Supper event is very important because during this time, Jesus instituted not only one, but two sacraments. During the Last Supper, Jesus instituted the sacrament of Holy Orders and the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, or the Holy Mass. And it was also during this time when Jesus performed the washing of the feet of his disciples, telling everyone that to become a disciple of Christ means to serve one another. To be great in the eyes of God is to be of service to his brothers and sisters. So the upper room is located on the second level or second story of the building. And right down the upper room today, presently, is the tomb of King David, and that is on Mount Zion. And the upper room and the tomb of King David is, was built just outside the walls of the old city of Jerusalem. And near this place today is also the Dervishan Abbey. The Dervishan Abbey is a monastery and a church built in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary because it was also traditionally believed that it was in this place that our Blessed Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, slept to her death. That's why it's called Dermission Abbey. And inside this Abbey, there is a very big statue of the sleeping Virgin Mary, sleeping or maybe about to die or, or, or maybe dead Virgin Mary. But we know, we all know that our Blessed Mother, when she died, she was brought to heaven, body and soul. So this place, the upper room, was the place of the Last Supper. It's also called the Senacle, from the Latin word Cenaculo, meaning dining room. So this place is very important. Why? Because it was the last supper for Jesus Christ. He knew very well that it was his last supper, that sooner he would be arrested and he would be put to death. And we you know that the last words of a dying person are always important. We you know that. And there is a family member who is dying. We always make time to go home, at least to communicate with the dying family member for the last time. That's the time when their messages or their words are very important because these are their last words. Just like during the last supper, Jesus gave many beautiful, beautiful messages and beautiful teachings. You know, even in my in my ministry as, as a priest, I always, it's always, for me, it's always good, it's always a nice feeling when I am able to, to visit or to see for the last time a dying person when he gives or she gives her or his last confession, you know, their last confession is always the best because they themselves know that they are about to depart this life. You know, when I was still a young priest, I had a sick call, I was called for a confession of a very old woman who was very sick, she was dying. And when we entered her house, her house was 
is very simple, very typical of the common Filipino Lipahat, you know, the Lipahat that we have in the province. So the house was, was made of Lipa, the floor was made of bamboo, and she was lying on the floor of the Lipahat. And I knew she was really, she really wanted to say her last confession. But the problem was, she, her voice was almost inaudible. I, I could barely hear her very, very soft and dying voice. I was telling myself as a young person, how can I hear her confession? I could barely hear her voice. So the last decision that I made was to lay down beside the dying woman in order to have my ear close to her mouth as so I was lying next to her. And you know, I overheard the neighbors who were peeping through the opening of the small door. They were, they were, they were saying, Alam, no, no, so ang balik dito, mas tiguwa mo. Because I was a little bit of the old woman. No? What, what, what is that phrase to you? Why is he lying down with the old woman? Yung mga maritis na sa nasa ginis lang kami. Kasi kimanti yun ay trigahon pa yun. But then, for me, that was a very important moment in her life and a very important event also in my ministry as a priest. The last words are always very beautiful words of the dying person. And in this case, Jesus knew that his end was about to come. And he left behind beautiful messages. First, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He also said, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. And I will go there to prepare a place for you. And I will come back and take you to myself. So that wherever I am, you will also be. I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. My brothers and sisters, they always say life is a journey. And indeed life is. Life is a journey from the womb to the tomb. And there is one very beautiful day in our life's journey and that is the day when we meet along the way the God of our lives. When we were young, we were given the gift of faith through baptism. But young as we thought we were, we never understood fully the sacrament and we even didn't know what was happening. But when we start to grow, we were educated by catechism. We learned that there is God and that God made the world, created human beings, and died for us. That's the time, that's the day when we came to know about God. And that is the day when we met our God. And that's a beautiful day because that very day, salvation has become possible for us. And in our way, in our life's journey, we constantly, we constantly are walking with God. Because God is Emmanuel. God is with us. I am the way, Jesus said. So, we need not be afraid. We need not be scared. Because there is a God who walks with us in our life's journey. And He said, I am the truth. The truth that reminds us that even though we are alive, there will come a time when we will die just like our Master, the Lord, who Himself died. And that is the truth. People today are so preoccupied with preserving life, with prolonging life, and sometimes they forget that life on earth is always limited. There's always a time frame. And if we buy only for physical life, everything will be in vain because beyond this planet, there is the genuine and real life that we should, we should be longing for. That is the truth. Jesus said, I am the life. We will all die, but Jesus promised us he will take us to Himself so that we will live with Him in the place He prepared for us in heaven. That is 
the most beautiful day beyond this lifetime when we all will be living in a place where becoming old is no longer a possibility. When sickness is already a possibility, no one gets sick, no one gets hurt, no one gets scared, no one gets afraid. We will live in that life where happiness is limitless and life is eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.